When you first create a new map file, you will be prompted to customize options such as the biome, dimensions, and playable area. A biome set is a special file that contains previously saved texture, environmental, and other map options. Next, you can set the total map dimensions here. You can also customize the map's bound size. These are the impassable border areas which make your map appear to extend beyond the player's view. The Height tab is where you can alter the topography of your map. Left-click to raise the terrain when using additive brushes. To reverse the direction of the height brush, hold Control before applying the brush. This will allow you to lower the terrain. To sample the height of the terrain currently under your mouse cursor, hold the Alt key and left-click the terrain. This hotkey can also be used with other brushes to sample the terrain, texture, or color below your cursor. When using the Terrain Resize tools, green outlines will help you visualize potential map changes before application. If required, you can shift your map center by changing the center value. Texture application is performed with the left mouse button. If you need a larger brush, change the size under the Radius setting or with the bracket keys. If you wish to change the color or tint of the texture, simply change the Diffuse setting. Brushes can be applied in custom shapes or areas by holding down the Shift key and left mouse button, selecting an area, and then releasing the selection. In cases where you want to paint a lot of uneven terrain quickly, you can use the cliff brush, which utilizes a group of textures angled in varying directions to better cover terrain features. Textures applied with the cliff brush can be readjusted in the event of height changes without disturbing adjacent textures by using the cliff healing brush, which is located in the same drop-down menu. Props are decorative items, such as trees, buildings, rocks, plants, and other objects that can be placed around your map. Prop placement is done with Shift-Left-Click. Once placed, you can change a prop's position with the rotation gizmo, movement arrows, or by editing the position and angle values under Object Control. Add depth to your map's color scheme with the color tool. To paint with a new color, choose a different vertex color and left-click to paint. Colors can be layered on top of textures to further customize your map terrain. Another way to quickly apply a brush to the map is to hold Control and left-click to select a rectangular area for painting. Splines are decorative map objects that place an animated or still texture along a path. Often they are used to create rivers or roads. Start by selecting a preset such as the river preset from the presets window. The starting point of the spline is placed with shift left click. Spline points placed after the first can be placed with control left click. Different aspects of the spline, such as segment width and height, are controlled by selecting their associated control point and changing the desired setting. Spline coloration can also be altered by selecting different presets and textures or by changing the diffuse setting. Use the Decal tool to add interesting features to your terrain. Select the texture you wish to serve as the base for your decal. Checking the Randomize option will place the decal in a random angle to help you quickly decorate your map. Then place the decal with Shift-Left-Click. The 
decal can be moved and recolored after placement. Grass materials, which interact with the wind in your environment, can be placed using the grass tool. The Add brush increases the density of the grass material on the terrain. The Subtract brush will decrease the density of the grass material. The Clear brush will completely remove grass material from the terrain. You can change the brush type under the Brush Settings panel. The map's water table will only become visible when the terrain height drops below the water table height. You can change this value under Water Settings. Other aspects of map water can also be customized here, such as the water's visible color. Before starting, select a post effects chain so your map's environment will display properly in-game. Aspects of the map's sunlighting can be changed here, like the sun's light intensity for example. Choose whether your map will be clear or foggy, and even choose specific aspects of the map fog like the tint. Experiment with other environmental settings, such as ambient color, to further customize the feel of your map. Place the light emitting elements in the lighting tab using shift left click. Remember that your map will be daytime unless you specified otherwise under environment settings, so you may need to uncheck night only to see your light object. Other settings for the selected light, such as color and intensity, can also be altered in the Light Properties panel. The Post Effects tab will help you customize how your map is displayed graphically in-game. Various settings you see under the Effects Editor can be altered to give your entire map a specific look. All units, structures, and terrain objects on the map will be impacted by these settings. Gameplay objects are objects that can directly impact players in-game, such as markers, resource blockers, and destructible debris. Objects are placed with shift-left-click and can be moved and altered after placement. The green flag you see is a spawner flag. It is not visible in-game and controls how the object it's attached to behaves. You can move the spawner flag if desired, only the object will be visible once the map is loaded. Many aspects of an object's in-game function are controlled in the spawner properties. For example, you can set the spawn count to 1. This way the object will only spawn one time per instance. Terrain passability is what determines where a player's units and structures can go on your map. How you choose to implement passability can create a unique map experience. Just remember that it is best practice to communicate this to your players using terrain features. Another important category of passability is brush. You can add brush to your map by picking it under the passability category, selecting it from the type list, and painting it onto the terrain with left click. An important concept to note when painting brush is context value. Brush with the same context value will share vision. If you wish for each patch of brush to have its own vision, be sure to grant each brush a unique context value.
The context value of the brush under your cursor will display in the current context value dialog. Change your map's gameplay settings under the Instance tab. Starting resources, for example, is usually set to 1000 for most in-game maps, but you can choose your own value here. The Instance tab is also where you can add resource fields and spigots. First, add a new resource field region and give it a unique name. You can adjust how many resources it contains after it's been created by selecting it from the Resource Fields box, inputting the desired amount, and confirming with Enter. Remember, the yield of the resource field is determined by the size of the radius at any given area in the field. It is good practice to visually represent resource areas so your players can see them on the map. Resource spigots can be placed into fields by selecting Edit Spigots and using Shift-Left-Click. These objects will handle the respawn of resource spigots in-game automatically. You can add unique audio events to your map by creating audio paths in the Audio tab. Use Shift-Left-Click to determine the bounds of your audio event. Next, select the desired audio event from the Looping or Intermittent Event drop-down tabs. We selected Looping because we want the audio file to play constantly. Maps must meet certain requirements before they can be uploaded to the workshop. If you are having difficulties uploading your map, check to make sure your map meets all requirements. For example, adjust starting points under the Objects tab so that they are clear of obstructions. Once you are ready to upload your map, choose the Publish to Steam Workshop menu option. Give your map a unique name interesting description, and cover image to represent it in the workshop. You can also choose whether your map is visible to all users or if it is private. Once satisfied with your entries, click Publish Map to initiate the upload.